All right, hey everybody, and uh, welcome back to the shed. Um, sorry about my disheveled look. I literally just kind of got out of bed and started messing around the house here, and that's where I'm at today. So, Renergy did get a hold of me regarding a potential fix for the Rover 60 amp um, controller on being able to switch it from 12 volt to 24 volt. As you can see in my other video, it wouldn't do that. They're saying to you know, turn it on and off or disconnect it and reconnect it after I set the 24 volt setting and then that would potentially solve the problem. I thought I did that, um, but I cut it out of the video. Um, not not purposely, I just kind of did it when I was rewiring and reconfiguring to check it on the 12 volt side. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, somebody else also said, try it in the auto mode. Which would, to me, is just like, if it works in the auto mode, that's fine. Um, I'm not concerned with this controller. I've definitely moved on. But um, at the end of the day, it really boils down to Renogy not being clear on how to take care of some of these things that they're promising work. So just a few more sentences, a few more lines uh, in their manual would make all the difference in the world. And I don't know why they don't do that. Um, you're coming from a guy that even back when I was younger and I used to work on a lot of cars, I could rebuild a motor with a $10 Chilton manual from uh, Payless or Bimart or something like that. And in our auto parts store, it doesn't matter. Um, and then I get manuals these days and Renergy is not the only one, but a lot of the manuals just lack the detail it takes to actually make this thing work. They just think we're gonna go online and find it, but then they don't post the videos online on how to actually do this. So we're relying on other people figuring it out, making trial and error um, type decisions. And I think that that could be damaging to a system. We should have things that are clearly mapped out for us. Anyways, let's take a look at what I got going on here. So I've got two different battery sets today. I've got one that's um, clearly hooked up in parallel, negative and positive, and one that's clearly hooked up in um, series, negative and positive. So this would be my 12 volt, this would be my 24 volt configuration. Um, I have this uh, 295 watt panel. It is a Canadian solar panel. Right now, it's, it's actually maxing out. I checked the VOC and it's like 37 volts, um, which is maxed out. It's actually, this is a used panel. It's doing really well. Um, I got it from uh, Depth Lighting in Southern Oregon. Um, guy is really cool. And you know, if you're here in Southern Oregon, you're looking for solar supplies, I highly recommend Depth Lighting. Um, just got some really quality stuff out there and a lot of knowledge. So. Right now, I don't have anything hooked up. Um, we're gonna, I got it set up so that uh, I'm gonna hook up this leg of the solar panel here in a minute, and then I'll be hooking up the batteries here. I've got, and the battery, I got a positive line hanging out over here, and I've got a negative line hanging out right here. We'll hook those up um, initially to the, well, let's try the 24 volt one, why not? So let's go ahead and take a look here. We'll snap this into place. Hopefully you guys can see this. I just have it on a regular lens today and not the macro. Um, the sun's beaming behind me. We'll try to get everything in the shade for you. So let's go ahead and hook up the panels first just to see if she sparks up. Got a little how you doing there. Where's my screwdriver? And it is connecting, turn it on. Okay, so as you can see, the panels are pulling in 36.7 volts right now. I'm zero watts, I don't have a load on it. I'm not charging up anything. And hopefully you guys can see that nice and clear like. I'm hoping so anyways. So we'll do that, kind of shadow it up a little bit. And let's go ahead and Let's hook some stuff up here, see if it throws up that air. Now I'm going to hook up the negative side first. Going 24. Well, let's check the settings really quick first, see what's happening here. Let's go to here, here, here. Whoop. 
Yep, I still got it in 24 volt. Technically, I turned it off for several days, actually. So we're going negative to negative here. Bing! That all hooked up. I tell you what though, um, Renogy did see my video and they, they were, they got back to me right away. <laughs> Within a day, I got a pretty good chuckle out of that. Put some fire in their pants, you know, cause you know, I'll, I'll say it from the beginning. I think Renogy has the potential to be a good company, but they are too focused on coming out with the latest and greatest and not dialing in what they have. And it's making for a lot of errors. Um, and that includes the manuals. like. They need somebody just to write out the manual or several people to write out a section, put it together, have it proofread, and get her done. Um, this is stuff that uh, folks like me, we rely on. We're not out here messing around. Um, you know, initially I was testing out Renogy to, you know, here in the shed, it's always been my test station. Um, and then that test station also is going to serve as a backup power supply. Um, but I wanted to test Renogy for things like the RV and stuff like that. And unfortunately, they're just not really uh, cutting it. Um, so let's take a look here. Let's go back. And 13.6 volts. So it's stuck in 12 volt mode, mode still. That's the reality of it. Let's go ahead and. Panels are bringing in 231 watts. We're at zero. I bet you anything is giving me an over voltage error. Um, LDV fault. LDV fault. Volt. Low discharge, huh? Oh, I hooked it up to the wrong one. Never mind. Hey, maybe it's working actually. Hold on. I've got it hooked up to the parallel one. So let's let's do this. That's not a bad uh I'm going to unhook that before it damaged the old battery. That was my bad on that one. Positive. Go. There's that. Put that down for now. Is uh, 100% right now. Let's go over here. Fault is null, so it's actually working it. Um, okay. Let's go over to here. Actually, let's go down. Let's go to here. Charge limit 15.5, so it should still be charging even though it's saying. I'm just saying it's charging. Still says it's 100% though, which is interesting. Um, I don't know where I've got that setting set at 13, approximately 13 volts. Let's take another look here at this here. Got it on user, 24 volt. That should be 31 volts there. Let's crank it up. Charge it at 32 volts. See what happens. Blow this thing up.
she's just charging away now doing pretty good um 27.2 volts don't want to charge at it 8.4 amps which is uh really good for this panel so Renogy you solved the problem here let's take a look here Renogy uh, you solved the problem but um you know at the end of the day why, why don't you just put that in your manual man it would have been simple and it would have been an easy answer for me to recommend this to somebody else who asked me that question. Um, it just blows my mind why the manual is not complete. And I have talked about that before in other videos. Like, why not just have a complete manual? It doesn't make sense to me. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm still moving on from your energy. We're going to use yet. I got a lot more energy videos coming up. You're not going to be my, pain, my main uh, power sources. Too much troubleshooting all the time. Too many errors that pop up it, due to incomplete manual or something not working correctly um really exact sequences of hooking things up and then it's not in the manual it's just too much trouble for me um i think i'd rather for you know have something for the backup power supply and for the camper and everything else we're just gonna have to figure out something that's a little bit more reliable on that end um which i have for the shed i got video on that coming up in the next few days. Um, for Renogy, I'm still gonna use it. I have the outdoor kitchen. Um, that's coming up. We'll be getting a roof on it pretty soon and mounting um, a couple of those panels you just saw in this video. And we're gonna get everything into place with the Renogy and the One Core um, and the BT300 Smart Shunt or whatever you call it. Um, Cause I, I actually, I think when the system's running well and you're not um, abusing it or um, you know, taking it to its limit. I'm uh, abusing is a bad word, but you should be able to take it to a limit. It seems to work okay sometimes. <laughs> so we're going to figure that out. And I think in a, a less critical spot for me, it's still going to be a fine uh, a system and not so critical. Um, the shed is getting more and more critical with uh, keeping things running and the eventual remodel in the house. I need some backup power during the electrical phase, all that good stuff. So um, thanks for checking in, you guys. Um, looks like Renergy sent me a solution for that. It appears to be working right now at 24 volts. Um, I may take a stab at 48 volts just because I got everything out here and see how it does. All right, take care, guys.